Our Jeep Cherokee has a lot of electrical gremlins, and if you've got one, yours probably has some too. So we're going to try to sort those things out, and hopefully we'll get all the little gizmos and widgets and things working on this and, you know, make it a little nicer to run and drive. So the HVAC fuse for the blower motor here, that's a 15 amp, third up from the bottom. Uh, that was corroded, I pulled it out, checked it, it was okay, put it back in, and we have blower motor now. So I banged on the driver's master switch module over there and, well, oh, now we got functionality with the, you know, the switch depressed or the switch undepressed. It's supposed to allow other people to control their own windows. And yep, sure enough, we just don't have that lock functionality yet. But okay, that's fixed. So I have here the passenger passenger door lock and window switch switches. They're very simple. They're just a series of contacts open or normally open or normally closed and then a pair of relays and then those various combinations just go out to the plugs for the window or door lock all right so we'll come over here plug everything in can't feel if the relays are working or not. Well, it's these upper two that are working. That goes to this relay. It's the thing with these micro relays. You don't know if you feel a click or not. I can test them with a meter. So I pulled this door lock module off, took it all apart in preparation for uh, troubleshooting and possibly replacing one of these micro relays here that are soldered to the board or figuring out if one of the diodes or resistors or capacitors is bad. And I can't remember which was the lock switch because I don't know what I did with the doohickey. So I started hitting buttons and well, lo and behold, it works all of a sudden. So, <laughs> I don't know. I guess banging it around or something did all that. I, I'm I'm not sure. I I guess I'll put it all back together now. Since I, I can't troubleshoot it because I don't know what was bad. Maybe one of the relays was stuck or something and cutting through the plastic jiggled it enough or whatever that it works now. I don't know. Well, we fixed that. Let's put her back together. Let's see battery power no power to the clock power no well, power cool. we got radio that works all right let's Just go the display nice doesn't work. metallica that's one radio all right radio numero deuce dose whatever i don't know all right that one Display works, we have display. Uh, just don't have any sound. Oh, oh, there we go. Well, I know that's a station around here. Why are we not getting any reception? Antenna popped out. Well, no, no, it didn't. Something didn't like me doing this. All right. So plug still in. Yep. Well, it's disappointing. 
clock, no radio. And the displays aren't interchangeable between the two. This is, a, this is the older, longer display. The one that half works and another that half works. Boy, I don't know. So I guess you got the choice between a clock or a working radio that you can't tell the station on. Not sure what to do with these radios for the moment. We'll figure that out. All right, we got radio number three we're gonna try. Uh, we're gonna swap it out with this one that the everything works except for the actual sound. Well, it did work when I first plugged it in, but now it doesn't. I suspect the amp's blown. Anyway, at this point, this is the third radio and you're probably wondering why am I doing these stock radios over and over again when I can just get a aftermarket unit and throw it in there. Well, my philosophy on these things is that if somebody wants to do a hack job and put an aftermarket radio in this, then that's that's their choice after they buy the vehicle. I'm going to try to just do it stock. You know, these things are inexpensive and well, quite frankly, these stock radios actually do a good job and they have good tactile feedback on the knobs and things and I'm kind of old school. You get these new units with the touch screens that you can't use while you're driving easy or the you know the single din units with the tiny tiny buttons and knobs that you can't see what you're doing anyway i'm sounding like an old geezer just ranting off here so let's swap this one with that one and then test it all right moment of truth for the new radio okay we've got uh starts to run the tape player when I oh. tell me we have a tape in there what have you got in there oh, no tape okay uh... <laughs> we got sound all from the back I hear nothing from the front check the nothing from the front So just the right rear is working. Well, that's disappointing. But at least it works. Okay, well, it works. I don't know about the speakers. Now, when I had this all apart, I checked the wiring. Like I said, I know the wiring is good in the speakers, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And I had this all apart, and I checked the wiring going through the doors, and... You know, the usual pinch points where wires go bad, and well, they appear to be okay, so I, I don't know what we're going to do here. Anyway, we got a radio that works, so I can put in this incorrect screw here, and, uh, all right, well, we got that semi-resolved. That's a start. I guess I'll have to look again at the wiring. I'm not sure. All right, regarding the horn... I don't know if you can hear that relay clicking. That tells me that all the wiring and power to the circuit is good. I guess we gotta check the horns themselves or the wiring after that relay. We know it's good up to the relay. We just gotta check the final wiring to the horns, I guess. So I took the horn off, which is real easy when you have this nice bumper modification, you know. And you can test it here. So I have the, t the positive terminal wired up and negative is just the ground. Got nothing. Maybe the horns are bad. All right, I got a better connection on my battery. And now we got hornage. I don't know. Let's hook it up and try it again. I fixed the horn. So it was a fuse. And it's fuse number 21, which is seven up from the bottom on this side. It's a 15 amp on four, five, six, seven. It's this fuse right here. And that fuse was blown. So we got horn now. That's good. So net result on the horns. I have four horns between the parts Jeep and this Jeep. 
and I could only coax one of them to work when I direct connected them to a 12 volt source. No amount of jostling or tapping or, you know, trying to make sure they're clean or cleaning contacts. They just wouldn't. I did get a peep, just, just the briefest of peeps out of a second one, but then I can never reproduce that. So we do have one horn that works and yeah, that's what we got for the moment. So, I mean, that's enough to qualify for working. So we're good there. Of course I tested these lights before, but now I have no remembrance of which one works. I think they're over there. I think this is, this one doesn't work. So, uh, got to pull this off totally spitballing here but I'm pretty sure it's that one but uh oh I'll go put the light switch back in temporarily since I gutted all this all right we can do that my goodness that's a little dirty there isn't it anyway where were we okay lights okay well, I got one there I got one there that's Got our tails. I think I already checked the ones up front on this header panel. Yep, we got lights. Okay, so that's not an issue. Oh, uh, we need turn signals. We got one dash light lighting up. I do see a flasher in there. I do not see a flasher in there. And again, I think the front one's, that one's working. That one, it's not working. Are they cat a corner? Okay. Let's try turn signal. We need our ignition for that, don't we? Okay, this should be, yeah, see it works there. It doesn't work on four ways. That would be in the four way circuit somewhere. I see it flashing there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of bright out, obviously, but just take my word for it. That one's flashing quick, like there's a bulb burned out. Not working here. And it's working in the front. There's something wrong back here. I guess that could keep the four-way from working, so let's open that up. Turn signal on. And the relay flashing, so I know the circuit's working. Yeah, we are getting, we are getting a fluctuating voltage. Oh, I think this bulb is bad. Oh, I'm getting nothing. Oh, there we go. It is the socket of some kind. It's loose or, I don't know. Sometimes the contacts get a little bent or something and it just needs some wiggling. And it's sat for so long, you know, <coughs> corrosion and... So as far as the window defogger goes, our Jeep is equipped with one and our replacement hatch has one as well, but it doesn't cycle on. You can hear the relay click when you hit the button. There was a fuse. This is supposed to be an empty slot, but this fuse is for I don't know, the defogger relay or something. I don't know. Anyway, this one was in the 13 slot and it should have been in the 14 slot. Well, I put it, moved it down, put it in the 14 slot. And we still have nothing. So, back to the drawing board on that. So the other thing about the window defogger is, supposedly it is on the same circuit as the hazards. But the hazards work. So that circuit is live. My best guess is there's something wrong with the switch or the timer unit that is supposed to be in the instrument cluster. You know, those have a chip and stuff, and they can go bad. I hooked up the battery, turned the key, uh, pressed the defroster switch. And the light doesn't come on on the switch, but we are getting power back at the defroster circuit. So, even though the light doesn't come on, it is working. So I press this again. It should turn off. Yes, indeed, it did turn off. 
and I should be able to turn it on again. Oh, hit it twice accidentally. Yep, so it is working. Just uh, the lighted switch isn't working. No light in the switch. That's fine. It works. That's the important thing. Be able to defrost your rear window down here in sunny Florida, you know. So my current working theory on the rear windshield wiper pump is that the actual pump may be fried. And you access that on the 97 plus XJs. You access that under the fender here. Pull the fender liner down. And those two pumps are for your windshield washer fluid. I believe the lower one is for the front and the rear one is for the back, so you don't run out of the front one first, you run out of the rear one first. And then you know your liquid's bad, so you can refill it before this one runs dry. So I'm gonna pull them out. Well, I'm gonna pull the upper one out. Take a look. Preliminary assessment. Got a hole in the pump. <laughs> dear Liza, dear Liza. Guess that maybe some water got in there and seized that up. I don't know. Of course, this is, you know, a combination of plastic and metal and Chrysler and their infinite wisdom made this a non-serviceable part. So, I guess we need a new one. So these pumps are very simple. Let me just show you here. There's two magnets. And then there's the magnet clip that locks in and holds the magnets in place. And then there's this rotor and two brushes down there inside. And of course this rotor just pulls right out of the pump, which is all this plastic part here. So it's fairly easy to take apart and put together. And of course this O-ring seals the metal case on, which has the rear bearing and it's down inside there. Anyway, So the part that's rusted is not the part that holds the magnets, it's just the part that holds that rear bearing, which was seized a little bit in place. So I think maybe, I think maybe this Frankenstein broken thing we have here now will run. Well, I can feel it trying to run when I connect it to the battery here. Still not running. Well, there we go. So once more, after a visit to our handy parts Jeep in the back 40, we have the windshield washer tank from the 96, and we have two pumps. They have the same wiring harness. Let's remove this one, which actually the rear one seems in better condition, so that's good. Let's pull that one and see if it works. We have screens, slightly different pump. I don't know. That's definitely a different part number because this has the screw on screen. So, where's the old one? These are pretty much the same, except for the pump body here. So, we know this motor works, we just need this, we just need the motor casing, so I, can, I don't know, I can take the motor casing off one of these, I think. Now we know how they come apart. It looks like there's little tabs that bend over down in there, in each groove that hold this motor casing on. So I think we can just unbend those tabs and maybe pull this casing off if it's not seized. And then we can replace it on our pump here. So it's really the poor man's mechanic show now is what we've turned into. Let me drill those rivets out so that I can get my driver in there and take the pump off. I don't know. Maybe it is easier to replace the pump. Depends how it seals. Let's take a look at that. Well, if that's the case, we got to make sure. Let's see if these work. Up our leads here. Oh, that one runs. Okay, we got one good pump. Check this one out. Oh, we got two good pumps. I have a feeling when Chrysler relocated the tank to under the fender, they did it a great disservice. It's much more dirty down there with stuff kicked up by the wheels, even with a fender liner. Okay. So basically, we're going to try to take one of these pumps off, I guess, and then instead of rivets, we can use little bolts, because I don't like re-riveting things. So where's my drill? Where's my tripod? It's a hot day. Where's my Dr. Pepper?
Okay, hopefully the impeller design and seal is the same. They are the same impeller design. Okay. Yeah, they look the same inside, so I clean that out. And which way does this go on? Oh, let's see. I believe it was roughly facing the same direction as... Yep, there we go. So now I just need to find two bolts to snip that together. Oh, almost forgot. I should try pumping Dr. Pepper as a test, eh? All right. New pump, new ore pump mounted on older motor. 98 pump on 96 motor. Uh, test. Oh yeah, she runs. Oh, feels like it's feels like it's pumping, but we won't know till we put her on and test her out. So let's put this back together. Put these pumps back on here, and yeah, and we'll give her a test run. All right, first pump test. And you know, I haven't tested it because it's just dirty. All right, let's test this. All right, that is fixed. So what did we learn about Jeep XJ wiper pumps? Well, the motors are the same. Uh, 90s, early 90s to late 90s. They're the same throughout the generations. It's just the actual pump housing part different and they can be interchanged. So you just gotta drill out the rivets, take the motors off and you can swap the motors. That's fine. Or you can order a whole new one for who knows how much money, but you know, if you have the used parts, that's best. Let me put that inner fender back together. Airbag troubleshooting. So I have heard that if you turn the key and it cycles on for seven seconds and then blinks and turns back on again, that means the module is okay, but there's a fault somewhere else. I haven't been watching it. I don't know. Let's check. Key cycle. Uh, I didn't see any blinking there. Okay, so according to my sources, that would be a module error. Now this Jeep, if you've seen any of our other earlier videos, you'll know that the airbag module has been relocated from the factory position under the seat to under the center console. There was a recall involving that. You can look it up online, but... You can tell where it was mounted under the seat, and now it's mounted under here, so... Either somebody did it, I'm assuming it was done by the recall, so... Uh, there is sometimes a, pro sometimes a problem where the module plug can become loose or unplugged. So I'm going to take out this glove compartment briefly and look at the module. A smart person would have done this while I had the entire console out, but, you know, I didn't, so... Well, it is what it is. So here's the airbag module, and all the pins and the plug appear okay, uncorroded, etc. So, yeah. Now with the airbag unplugged, let's make sure there's no change here. Oh, no change. <clears throat> okay. I'll plug that back in. Because if the module's bad, I don't have the money to replace it. So we know that's plugged in good. Well. Okay, so there's... There's two airbag fuses, number 26 and number 27, I think. They're the lowest down towards the rear of the vehicle in this fuse block, so I'm going to check them. All right, well, both airbag fuses appear to be okay. That's these two bottom fuses. From what I can find from my diagrams. So if it's not fuses and it's not the module plug, and I know the airbags are okay, and I think the clock spring is okay. 
it's probably a fault in the module itself which is what the lights telling me because it runs through a self test and then never completes the self test because the light stays on and doesn't flash and then come back on so yeah i can't pull the codes with my code reader even though it does have an srs code program for whatever reason it can't interact with this vehicle so probably the module's bad and for now we're just gonna leave that there's not much i can do without spending money unfortunately so this is the airbag module removed from the vehicle i've popped the clips on either side here and obviously it's very corroded uh very dirty inside it looks like this capacitor has popped my goodness it's corroded wow these aren't a very well sealed module as you can see it's just the edge of the metal cover against this aluminum rim here and well yeah i pay for that well i don't know if i can i don't know if i can save this just by cleaning it up and replacing that capacitor i'm not sure I have to see if I can get the board off of here. See if I can clean it up and maybe replace that capacitor. If not, then it's going to be shot. I don't know. Well, let's dig into this and see if it's even remotely savable. Here's the underside of the board. It's bad. I mean, these have got not just corrosion, but dirt. And my goodness. All right, well... I'm going to see if I can clean this up at all. Let's see what it looks like when it's cleaned up. Well, after some investigation, uh, if it'll show up on camera, you can see bubbling on that IC right there. This capacitor is actually not exploded yet. And there's some bubbling on this component. There's a little bit of I don't know if that's adhesive. That's probably not damaged, but I don't know if, if this bubbling is from the spray-on coating they put on. There's like a spray-on sealant that they put on here sometimes. And it looks like they used it here. I know you can see it's kind of shiny in some places. Either that or somebody spilled something on here and <laughs> it's hard to tell what it's supposed to look like. Uh, down in here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, there is a blown, I don't know if it's a little capacitor or resistor, way down in here. You can kind of see it is, come on, focus. It's uh, the top one right there. It's just completely fried. But this here... This doesn't look like a coating. This looks like that looks like a melted chip. Like it got way too hot. Uh, the top of this capacitor here looks like the top of this blew out because I can see air and I can see metal under there, and that shouldn't be. I don't think if it's actually is what I'm looking at. I think that's a capacitor hard to say but I don't think you should be able to see metal through the top of it and uh, actually have the metal sticking out the top of it but in any case this little uh, I don't know if it's a resistor or a capacitor I think it's a tiny little capacitor down there is fried and I won't be replacing that because it's not something I do it's very melted down in there uh, look at the bottom of the board It'd be right about in this area here. Bottom of the board doesn't look too good either. But it looks like... To my untrained eye, it looks like this capacitor, resistor, or whatever that component is there is... 
it's a little burned. I, I have a feeling that one's burned out. Uh, it's not just corrosion on there. And that's right across from the other component that burned out. So I feel like something, the board got too hot in that area or something. And, you know, you can draw your own conclusions from there. Anyway, this isn't something that I'm going to take the time to fix because it's just not worth it. Uh, I would say this is probably... This is probably shot. I mean, I'm sure if you were an electrical engineer and this was worth a lot of money, you could fix it, but I don't think I'm gonna. So I guess that's gonna be it for the airbag module. I suppose we'll have to get a new one. All right, so at long last, I have got, after several tries on the internet, uh, my orders kept getting canceled or not being shipped. I have an airbag module from a 99XJ, and it is a 99 because it has a 99 date stamp on it. So let's put that in. I'll plug it in temporarily. Oh, come on now. that installed now moment of truth probably should have unplugged the battery when I did that but well too late now oh, we still have an airbag light oh no 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 airbag light went out let me get my head away from this as I start it <laughs> the airbag light went out. Brake light's on because I do have the brake on. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, finally, we got all the dash lights off. She does start reluctantly. I think that's because of my ground wire. Uh, if you watch, I think it's in the transmission episode where I had to pull the transmission. I was starting it and they haven't run into the fender, the main ground running to the fender. And I'm. 99% certain it's not supposed to be that way. I think if I run a ground line directly to the engine, it'll, because it has to, right now it has to run all the way through the body rather than going right through the engine, the ground circuit, so. All right. She runs good. Okay. I'm gonna call that good. We got all the electronics fixed then, so I can put that back together. Oh, that feels great. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking with us. We really appreciate you watching. Without the views and without the comments and everything, there'd be no point in me doing this. Really appreciate you watching my crazy, sometimes boring and stupid videos. Uh, but most important, uh, we appreciate your likes, subscribes, comments. Whatever you do helps the channel out, so we really appreciate it. Um, trying to grow this channel a little bit and and anybody who watches this far well we really appreciate you we appreciate you all even if you didn't watch this far but we really appreciate you so thanks for watching